conversation. Yeah. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar on early spring container gardens. So we're super excited that we have some spring weather now. Um, I'm just going to stall for a second here and let uh, people get logged in. I'm seeing those numbers go up, but I know it takes a couple minutes. So I want to make sure we've got uh, mo more of our group in before we really get started. Um, just a warning. We do have a large crowd today, so just be prepared if we're not able to get to your questions today. Uh, remember, if uh, you've attended these classes before, or if you're new, you can always hit reply to your confirmation email following the class and send us questions after the class. We are also recording this class, so you can access the links following. We'll be sending those out. Um, Quick introduction. Uh, first, we have, of course, Peg, uh, who's been doing classes with us online and in store, and she used to do the gardening advisor show. She really needs no introduction. Uh, and so she's joining us today to talk about containers. With us today also is Andy Donath. Um, he's going to be helping her out today, and uh, we're really glad, and I'm super excited to have him on here doing our first uh, class with us online. So, um, Peg, I know you have a lot to cover, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, pass it on over to you. Thank you very much, and I'm very excited because I think this is the first that we've tried the two of us together. So this is a trial run for us, and we've got a lot of information. We may not get through all of it, but today's topic is actually early spring containers. And so you want to make those choices plants that are cool hardy and we'll talk more about this hardiness thing as we go along but there's some interesting things that you can do early spring containers that enjoy the cool weather and then a lot of them will continue into the summer too fun as the little corkscrew rush there's the straight ones and then there's the curly headed ones kind of like mine you know <laughs> and then we have other fun accents like the little charmed wine oxalis we'll talk more about the plants to you as we go along but in the meantime we have andy with us and andy is going to give us information as we go along about the containers Andy orders a lot of our containers and he knows a great deal about them. And actually, Andy, we're so pleased to have you on the show today. And, and the first one that you're going to talk about is one that I really don't know anything about, is a self-watering pot. I have over the years accumulated more pots than I know what to do with. <laughs> and I... <clears throat> just having one self-watering one wouldn't really help me very much. So I'm anxious to learn, teach us about this self-watering pot. Sounds great. Hi, everybody. All right, self-watering pot. Why do we want a self-watering pot? Somebody might ask themselves, and that's to help our plants survive when we may not be able to give full attention to watering needs, the heat of the summer, at least in our Northern Virginia area and many other places, the United States um, get exceptional amount of heat and some, sometimes it can take a lot of water to keep everything happy. This container right here. Let me scoot back so you have no more problem. space. I'm actually gonna remove the inside here for everybody just so they can see that. This container does not have drainage. It does not have a drain hole that is intentful so that water can be stored in this reservoir. It's got a really neat, simple insert that just slides right down in here. We would plant this container up as we would plant any other container. We would put our potting media all the way down into this cylindrical form, pot it up here with our plant, and this little tube would feed water into it, which would then in return <clears throat> hold water in the reservoir of the container. And the soil would slowly wick the water up so that the plant would remain um, watered for, you know, it, you can get at least a couple of weeks of time out of it, if not more, depending on the yeah. season and the heat. Right, for the vacations, but Absolutely one would have right. to watch in high temperatures, not ease, et cetera. Absolutely. Um, a couple, a couple, People make uh, self-watering pots. Uh, we've got a 
a really good selection, different sizes, different colors, different looks, something for everybody. everybody. Yeah. I'm excited, you know. I do hear good things about it. I, I have personally have not um, used one, as I said myself. Now, continuing on with the different types of containers, at least a few of them today, we can't do all of them. But also, if we bring up this, this first picture, uh, we can talk about concrete. And, and you can tell them a little bit about concrete. This one we potted up a couple of years ago and it's a fun thing. And I asked Andy, do we still have a container like that? And he said, only a couple of small ones. Okay, right? That's correct, yes. <laughs> okay. So um, we don't have this same big one, but we do have a lot of concrete, right? Yep, many, many different styles of concrete. Concrete's a, a beautiful, um, a beautiful product to have containers made out of um, a classic look uh, comes in both traditional and modern feels for for anybody's style. Um, there is, you know, no problem on a windy day that your concrete container it's gonna is going to it's going to stay put. <laughs> Nobody's running off with it. Uh, it's just a wonderful material and a, a really nice look. Right, and in this particular one, there's bulbs, and fortunately, we do have at the moment some of these bulbs that have been started in greenhouses and can be included in your pot and then take them away when they're finished and plug in some of the summer annuals. But in this particular pot, there's diacea or nemesia, I'm not sure which, both of which are cool hardy with uh, violas and uh, pansies. So concrete is a good thing and it's pretty winter hardy, right? Absolutely, um, you know, everybody asks, if one material is maybe better in the winter, um, we, we'll we'll get to a little bit later some yeah. things we can do for winter care with our containers. But concrete uh, being a little bit more of a durable, dense material holds up beautifully uh, through yeah. through the four seasons. Absolutely, I have several concrete containers that I've had for many years, and they they're fine. But we will talk about things to make help them be more winter hardy Absolutely. okay and i think we have a ne the next picture coming up is on the sort of the composites that you talk about okay. composites yeah and the I plastics can definitely okay. speak to that um i think everybody wants something that they can move around if they need to um to make it easy um regardless of your age or your physical abilities a lightweight container is really nice to get home and set up Maybe it's on a balcony, maybe it's in the backyard, wherever it may be. Um, wonderful, yet another wonderful material on the other side of concrete is a lightweight material. Now, when we plant it up, it's still gonna hold weight and sit beautifully on the property. Right. Um, but yeah, a lot of lightweight options here, whether it's a plastic or a composite. And some of these are absolutely beautiful. People will think you have a concrete planter and it's a lightweight material, which is really nice. Yeah, yeah. It is. Do we have time to take a couple of questions on the containers? We have, we some, have time? Yeah, so we have some questions about drainage for, I believe, the self-watering pot. Does that get to be a problem or is it set up so that it can handle? Well, let's, let's go back to them and let him explain that. They're concerned about drainage since it doesn't have holes. Sure. Um, generally, on the self-watering containers that, that we are carrying, there is a overflow drain that sets, sits, excuse me, around about a third up the way of the container. And what that's doing is if you put over water it or it's out in rain, it can only fill up so full before the water then comes out at this overflow line. Okay. Um, still needs to um, have a little bit of, I mean, the, the, the soil wicks the water, so it's still going to take time um, for that water to dissipate in there, but it's being held in a reservoir, um, you know, with a, with a nice potty media, there's, there should be no issues with drainage that during the winter is when we'd, we'd want to be more aware of if we have water in there. This is something we may plant annually if we're in an area that has a hard this, freeze. This would not be a container that you leave out over winter. This particular Correct. container, we're going to talk about the winter hardiness of the various containers. 
But this one, you would put annuals in. You would not plant a shrub or a tree or something that has to stay. Exactly. Okay. Absolutely. Because it yeah. has water in it. And anything that has water in it is susceptible to breakage. You got it. Yep. Okay. All right. Now, let's let's move on. I think if we can go back to the other pictures, we did that one. Let's see what's on the next one, okay? Okay, we were talking about composite, and I really do want you to talk about this grouping of containers because I'm all for large containers. The only time I use a small container is where it's up close and I know that I have to keep it water. So uh, when people come out, I recommend nothing smaller than uh, certainly 12 inches, but preferably 14, 16, 18 and up. This one is an up. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> this one is quite large. And of course, my granddaughter had made a fairy garden in it and it has been around and I have two or three of these that I have fairy gardens in. And I'll share those with you when we do a later seminar on, on hypertufa and that sort of containers, okay? But this, you have a good stock of these, don't you? Yeah. Um, Different shapes. Though. Absolutely. So, so of composite and lightweight, we have a, a really durable plastic brand that has beautiful looks to it um, in many different shapes, sizes, colors. Um, once again, both in traditional and in modern looks, a really beautiful yeah. container. So the composites are great, and most of those are pretty winter hardy, okay? Uh, we'll, we'll speak a little bit more as we go along about the winter hardiness, okay? Now let's talk about the terracotta. Yes, no, we've got this one first, ceramics. Oh, yes. We're going ceramics. This is ceramics. <laughs> So let's talk about those. And I am going to bring a couple little ones too. In now, the here. brought the smaller ones up because these are, they are up close and personal that you're going to take care of. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you're going to do larger containers, but the smaller ones because we had room for them. <laughs> That's right. You know, I like, I like ceramics for multiple reasons. Uh, the, the beauty of a ceramic is just that wonderful glaze and color that you can get. There's so many ways to, to, express ourselves in the garden right. and a beautiful ceramic pot is a wonderful way to get some bright vibrant color or, or really any color you want right. um let's come back to us now danny and uh, let him show the color that's in this because of course i picked up my favorite colors <laughs> really beautiful earthy tone that peggy has picked out here it's got kind of this volcanic finish around the top this would fit in in so many different environments and it's not going to take away from the beauty of the plants in there as well. It's going to be a really good um, duo. Yeah. And, and actually, I'm a fond of terracotta. And this is a good as a mix for that. Now, looking on the inside, if I can still read this, this one, I think one is frost resistant. That's right. I think that's what it's in. Yep, frost resistant. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Now, what does that mean? Uh, because a lot of them, including the one, the beautiful blue that's in there. Yeah, I'll bring that back. Is Oh, I picked this. I love it because I'm in the blue. And blues are my accents with my terracotta. But some of them don't have that frost-resistant tag on there. But I have used them in my garden as long as we keep them off the soil, which we're going to talk a little bit more about. And I haven't had one break. Absolutely. As long as they're well fired. Most of the containers that we're carrying out of our store, absolutely, uh, an outdoor container, ceramic, is, is generally frost resistant. A little bit thicker clay, right. uh, just holds up to the weather a little bit better. And yeah, we'll, we'll speak a little bit more yeah. depthly of other ways to get some um, right. better longevity out of your containers as well over the winter season. Now, talking about the, the winter hardiness, I, I love when we bring in some of those Mexican pottery and I use those as accent, but they are not winter hardy. Absolutely. <laughs> they have not been fired well. Uh, different, uh, different conditions, the, the Talavera or Mexican pottery Peggy was referring to, um, uh, made with a different clay, uh, fired in different conditions. 
uh, absolutely beautiful product, uh, but fragile to the elements in this area. So great thing to have uh, through the, the warm season. And as we get closer to the, the sure. cold season, it's time to store it. Also similar to our Aquapot once again, wonderful all season until we start hitting cold temperatures. And now we need to be aware that uh, the winter is coming. And that we have to store it, yes. But let's talk about the terracotta and bring up that particular one. Um, yeah, here we go. Now, this is a very large terracotta pot, which I don't think is available anymore, is it? it I got this one years ago. That specific one, um, probably not anymore, but still many different styles. And we are bringing in many different shapes and sizes of terracotta generally. Are you good? Mm -hmm. Plus, you can go back to that beautiful composite part, that pot that we did. Now, what is the brand name of that one? Uh, that I was that's uh, important. Yeah, uh, good question. That's Crescent. Crescent. Okay. Yeah, Crescent it's Gardens. Crescent. Would make a great pot. Now, why am I talking about this particularly? Because when you're talking about hardy containers, I have grown Japanese maples in these pots for a long time. And I normally protect this one in the winter time by with the side bins, pinning uh, bubble wrap into it, and then pinning uh, a strip of uh, burlap yeah. and tying it down so that it's attractive. And I normally protect this pot. I goofed up and didn't do that this year. So uh, thank goodness it has made it through. Otherwise, I would be coming to you and saying, where is that big crescent pot? I need That's right. it. But you can do this, and it's underplanted with violas okay so that's that i do protect but going into the next one uh winter hardiness on terracotta what's your feeling on that terracotta is a beautiful traditional look as in terms of winter hardiness not as durable as a concrete or a ceramic um have plenty of customers that still have have their same terracotta pot going strong, yeah. um, but many others that said, yep, didn't quite make it this season. Um, terracotta is very a, a, approachable just with its um, traditional qualities in terms of the look. So you can get a lot out of it, but not quite winter hardy as our other materials. No, it is not. I think of it as my good dress. It goes with everything. That's right. And I don't take my containers in, and I do lose one now and then. But let's talk about how we are less likely to lose them. Uh, wonderful, okay, yeah. wonderful question. How do we um, get our pottery to last a little bit longer through the winter? And what I'm going to show you in just a moment here is the, the, the most straightforward way that, that we can get a better lifespan out of our pottery. And that doesn't matter if we're working with concrete, ceramic, yeah. terracotta, any container through the winter. It's a wonderful thing to do is to use a, a pot foot or riser, if you will. This is gonna elevate the container. You take, for example, a round container would take three pot feet, spread evenly like a third away around. And just elevating that container off the ground allows water to drain the bottom. The container will not be sitting in a shallow puddle of water, which in the middle of a cold winter is going to freeze, expand, and, and can cause damage. Um, pot feet are made out of <coughs> concrete to go with a concrete container. Terracotta to go with the terracotta container. I had to bring in the <laughs> terracotta frog because that's, uh, that's just too fun and cute. We talk about expressing ourselves. We don't have to do that just with flowers. We can do that with a pot feed if we want to. Uh, a ceramic, like a, a cobalt blue, nice look. And, and, and we attempt to carry uh, all sorts of different styles to match each and every type of material you may be using. And that's great. Now, we also talked about don't be a saucer. So saucers are great to protect your floor um, from, from, from the moisture. They're um, great for catching that water. In so summertime. in turn, in the winter, that can be a big negative for right. containers. If uh, right. just like the pot feet elevating up, you don't want a saucer holding water. It's gonna, that water's gonna freeze in the winter and can cause damage and 
And one cold night. Right. So don't leave your pots sitting on soil. They're fine on a patio, on a deck, on a surface that drains, but never in the wintertime if you use pot feet. Now, I learned the hard way with decks and wood that you don't want a container, even with a saucer under it, sitting directly on the wood. I love these. Wonderful product Peggy's yeah. got here. If everybody can see that at home, this is a, a saucer system with, with casters or wheels, if you will. Um, the ones that we're carrying here hold a, a wonderful amount of weight. So you yeah. don't have to worry about structurally. It's very strong and, and also a great way to move, move things around as well right. and keep things off of surfaces you either want to protect. Um, the air can flow beneath it and therefore you don't ruin your wood. Okay? Exactly. <laughs> Plus, our containers are mobile. That's one of the beauties of all of them. And, and this helps with the mobility. Great, easy way. Nobody yeah. wants to try to lift a container that's right. fully planted. You've got it on wheels. You can get it to exactly where you need it. Now, talking about the containers, bigger than these, really, although that one would get pretty heavy, too. When you get into that 18-inch and above, plus a lot of our pots that are so striking, particularly if you do the big ones with shorter ones, hold a lot of soil. Okay. So in order to move those around, I have what I so often call a little truck, but I don't think that's the right word. It's a that's, that's Peggy's plant dolly she's <laughs> talking about, you know, a, a, a two-wheeled cart that you can get the lip of it underneath a heavy container to help you assist just so you, you can be safe, not hurt yourself, not hurt your container, not hurt right. your plants. Right. Uh, those, those large containers, they get heavy, even a even a lightweight composite material right. is light when it's empty, heavy. but as we plant it with potting soil and plants and water it in, there can be some weight and we all want to be aware of that and be safe. Okay. Uh, I think we'll, before we pot one up, maybe we'll talk about a little more winter hardiness thing with the next one. Okay. Uh, okay. We've just come through some fun three, four days, okay? where we had this beauty warm weather and then we got some really cold weather. Now I did some experimenting with all of these things. We bring into the greenhouse a lot of uh, annuals and perennials. I'm talking about right now because we're talking containers, okay? Um, that are cold hardy, okay. Most of that that involves a lot of the ones that are over here that we'll talk more about, but it, but petunias, believe it or not, love cooler weather, although they perform well in hot weather also. We talk about diacea and um, carnations and dusty miller and snapdragons and violas and pansies. Those are the things that really perform well right now. Okay, those particular plants have been usually, and the herbs that we bring in, and the cool season vegetables like the cabbage and the kale and all of them, those have usually been cooled down to 38. 38 is not 17, okay? So I, even though I had gotten them accustomed to being out at night at my house, the ones that I took home and planted in containers, still I was a little concerned. So what I did with uh, most of the containers, and, and this one is really a tight wrap for some reason. I didn't do it quite that tight with some of them. Let's come back to, to us, okay? And we'll talk a little bit about this. Um, I have a lot of things called Harvest Guard, but there's two or three different types. It's very thin. And yet it is very protecting. We had a lot of wind, which is harm. I mean, you know, it, they get wind blown too. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I cover those things, leaving it loose somewhat so the plant can grow inside because you can leave this on for days. You don't have to get off because the rain goes through and the sun goes through. But these things are so incredible. Yes. Sad. 
Sod, sod pin, sod staple. Yeah. Great way yeah. to fasten that down. And you can fasten it down. And if you can't fasten it on the container, you can leave it long enough to tie it around. And some of it with my, uh, I should have showed a picture of that because it's so important. People wonder why their hydrangeas don't bloom. And, and it's because often they got frosted, okay? Um, so I really did a job on covering those and it took a fair amount of this material because I have a number on them, okay? And so <laughs> to me, that, that's very, very important. Can you think of anything else that we need to cover as far as the, any, any winter thing is concerned? I think that is pretty much I right. We, that we did cover quite a um, well, let's talk for a minute then about uh, how we plant up containers. And, and I want you to please also give a help with people's idea of how to fill right the pot. We're not there yet. Okay. Right, your container. Now, this is probably 18 inches, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. yeah, about 18 inches. Absolutely. This is a great size to get a number of pots, a uh, number of plants companion together to go through now and into and through the summer and fall, okay? And how do we do it? I love to put a piece of landscape fabric in the bottom so that the soil stays in the pot and the little garments can't go into it either, you know? So we actually to make it easy because it usually comes in large rolls we cut it in one yard pieces out here, certainly at the fair location. And, um, and you can get that easily and it's affordable, you know. So a piece of landscape fabric that goes into the bottom. And that landscape fabric that Peggy's describing, we spoke of if we have our containers on our deck, for example, is another great way to, once again, retain that soil. So as we're watering our plants, we don't see a, a, a soil mess on our on our beautiful patio over deck. So great that's, things. That's a good point to make. So what kind of soil? Actually, you have one of them on the other side of you. Down on I think I see it right and, and here. And you know why I put that one over there? Because you you have the middle of it. I'm glad I got it off the ground. This is our Merrifield mix. And I'm partial to that because we did our own mix. It has a moisture control in it, which is one reason it's heavier, okay? Uh, because it, it's moist, somewhat moist inside. But that helps a lot with the water. Now, if you are an organic grower, you, you don't want that because it's a polymer. That's okay? right. So we do have organic mixes. So what do we do with that is fill it all the way, after you put your fabric in, fill it all the way up at least to here with the potting medium. And then I like to include the fertilizer now. There are lots of fertilizers out there. I usually reach for an organic, and let's see if I've got the leverage. <laughs> I do. I like this one, Andy. And that's fantastic. And garden tone, there's not a great deal of difference. They're almost interchangeable, but they are organic. And so I put a good large handful into, into that and mix it up. And that is actually as long lasting as slow release. This garden tone is excellent, particularly for the herbs and vegetables. But as I said, I, I sort of interchange those anyway. So you could sit those on the floor if you will. And, um, okay, after that, if you feel you need additional um, fertilization, I'm really pretty much all organic when I plant in the soil outside, but I'm not that careful about the containers, okay? So I do enjoy using a liquid fertilizer periodically, not in the herbs because they don't like to be fertilized too much. And I want to keep those organic because I'm eating them, but we're not eating these annuals normally. And uh, so I will often use the boom booster according to the directions every couple of weeks. 
and the petunias love it because they're heavy feeders. So after you have put that soil in here, then you begin to assemble your plants, obviously taking them out of their containers and, and you need to loosen that soil somewhat on the outside and then you can place them pot to pot if you choose to do that, okay? Now here, when, when you were saying, Andy, that this landscape fabric helped to keep the uh, soil inside the pot. I have another thing that helps to keep the soil inside the pot and I can't be without it. And that is small gravel. Mm. Once I've potted this up and topped it off with the potting soil, which you'll have to do go around the plants, then I like to put a small gravel. You can use pea gravel, uh, the little jacks. Um, River jack. Yeah. Three eighths inch. You got it. Three eighths. But my absolute favorite is the Seminole chips. They're a red stone, they're irregular. The, um, the other two are somewhat round. And I found that, that the slugs don't like this because it kind of cuts their body. Mm -hmm. Now, you know what else doesn't like it? Squirrels. Squirrels dig in fresh soil and they can unpot a container so quickly. Absolutely. So I like to top up, always, always hold your soil back at least a half an inch so that you can water it easily. If you fill it all the way to the top, it's very difficult to water. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, a great way to protect. So if you put a, a half inch of this on this, that the squirrels don't like it, and the, the snails and slugs don't like it as well. Guess what else? When you're watering, it keeps the soil on the top. Absolutely. And Didn't think about it that way. way. That's a great point. Well, see, there's, there's both ways. There's coming out this way. That's right. That so that's a, that's a, a fun thing to do. Uh -huh. All right, now, where are we going to go from here? Let's see what the next picture is. Okay. We showed you, to, okay, the, the combination of plants, okay. This is my winter planting. Um, plant, planted it in the fall. I planted these tulips and uh, things beneath as I potted up the kale, the ornamental kale. I am very fond of that ornamental kale because it's beautiful over the winter. The cabbage won't winter well for me this way, but the kale does. And then in, when we get to the next picture, not yet. <laughs> when we get to the next picture, you'll see what it does in the spring. But this is what is being enjoyed now with the tulips that I did underneath in the fall. And then I put in the, the violas. I love the mixture of pansies and violas, but I'll tell you, for me, the violas outperform the pansies. Mm. They really get beautiful and they, they like the heat better. So they will go deeper into our hot weather before you have to take those out and then you can replace those with the summer annuals. But I also have I have a juniper in there, a cascading juniper, and to get some evergreens into this mix. And then I have uh, some of the small evergreens also, so that this is a beautiful spot that I can view from my front porch all winter long. It's beautiful. And then when we come to the summer containers, I'll show you how I can watch the hummingbirds sleep. So we can go to the next one now, Danny. And this is what it's going to look like when those dogwood and azaleas, oh, springs, spring springs, right? And those little yellow blossoms are the blossoms of the cape. Mm. And they stay in bloom for about three weeks. And after that, I take them out. 
So if we come back to me, I'm going to talk about, I always do this, and, and I, I really rarely vary from it, talking about the tools. And I was very pleased to, to hear you say, Andy, that, that people enjoy this. You know? mm -hmm. It's a Wilcox travel. It is heavy duty. It's made in America. There's several different sizes. And I totally enjoy this long one because it gives me leverage. People ask with container gardening, can I reuse my potting soil? And I certainly do. The only thing I might be likely to change is if I've done it more than two years, is tomatoes. Because they particularly like to be rotated, okay? And some other things do too, but I've made it for that. So I will take out maybe a third of it and add in fresh. But this little bad baby will go all the way to the bottom of that container to loosen that old potting soil because it's full of roots now. People don't realize those roots will go all the way to the bottom. Absolutely. Even the annuals go deeper than they think. So I want to loosen that old soil and mix in one third new. And then I go from there. But I love this. And I was telling you last night, I was down on Nice uh, getting up an obnoxious weed that's fairly shallow rooted. And I had the baby one of the list and it just popped those things out so nicely. So now I'm, I've fallen in love with the little one too. So the different sizes. Wilcox, it is fantastic. Great tool. Love it, love it, love it. And other tools, I can't be without Joyce Chance. I don't know whether I've convinced you you need to carry one of these around or whatever, but uh, they're fantastic. In the kitchen, because they were designed to be used in the kitchen. And I use them outside and in the craft shop everywhere. But there has to be some dead heading of flowers. Fantastic for that purpose. Going down like so. You see, I'm not, not doing this. I'm doing this because it's tidier that way. Okay. Great for deadhead. Absolutely. All over. Sure. Wonderful to do that. You know, I don't think there's any others over there that need deadheading right now. So, uh, of course, I have to have. I'm sure you use those, right? Yep. <laughs> Couple times. Yeah, I love the Felco. Felco's a great, 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 great brand. Yep, Swiss made and uh, made to last in a couple different um, sizes and levels, tiers of the right. Felco proner. They're not inexpensive, but they are well worth it to me. I've tried all kinds and I always go back to Felco, but I keep these in my little pack patch of one out gardening because it's so important. I really do. Okay, let's go to the next pick, Danny. I think that one is going to be herbs. Yes, herbs do so, so well in containers, okay? And I would highly recommend that you all go to uh, beginning soon, particularly uh, with spring coming on, to some of our public gardens because that's where you can get to see people using so many different things and, and it's really great. This is an assemblage of herbs next to an area, a sitting area. And they're also fragrance, wonderful. I like to have my herbs near the, the back door so that I can go out and snip them. I had them across the creek and in the bigger garden and, and it's just a little too far to go get them. But we, if you can make it without turning your, your glass of water over and bring that container up here. Yes, yes, please. And there again, that's one of your composites, okay? Which is attractive. It has a sweet little medallion on the front. But it, can you tilt it for me? I can. Uh, 
cold hearty, okay? I didn't even cover all of mine like this and they came through beautifully. So this again has my favorite herbs in it or some of them anyway, lemon thyme, regular thyme, dill, uh, French thyme. This one is Italian parsley and I think that one's oregano. And in the middle is rosemary. And I love to include whenever possible, a little viola because that gives you even more color. And guess what? They're edible. Yeah. The violas. Mm -hmm. Violas and pansies are edible. Looks like we've got lunch. <laughs> we, we just need a good slab of salmon. Yes, okay. absolutely. <gasps> salmon and dill. We haven't tried it yet. That's fine. So not only is it edible, but it's beautiful to decorate your, your dishes with, you know. Now, this is a lot of herbs in one container, um, really, 18-inch uh, even. But the dill won't last forever. As it goes into summer, it's going to slack off. So that can count, and that gives you a little more room. And if you chose to, you could simply, with that nice deep trowel, you could lift out and start another pot if you chose to. But this in the meantime is fantastic because you've got a lot of the things that you season with right here in this pot. Okay, that's wonderful. great. And the then, I, isn't it wonderful? I've never had so, well, yes, I've borrowed Danny's muscles and I know them. <laughs> I can't sell you short. Can we bring that one up? Yeah, but... yeah, let's do that. I love this one. This one really will do full sun. Although the Carabells would prefer to have a little afternoon shade. Gorgeous uh, Ascot Rainbow, Ascot Rainbow Euphorbia. This is a perennial with Hugra Carl Bells. That is a perennial. Wonderful color. And then we have the sedum trailing of this, Angelina. A perennial. Added in are the violas and isn't that a beautiful new petunia? I love that one. I think it's a headliner. They named them all, you know. Relatively new last year, I think was the first year I saw that. I'm not sure. And then the lamb's ear, which is a perennial. So you've got something that's actually a year-round container and all you have to do is change the annuals in. Wonderful. Okay. And then we have some others behind us too, which we won't bring all of these up, but there's so many things that are actually uh, hardy. Now, this is going to be asking a little bit of you, okay? But if you can pull that part mm -hmm. around to Absolutely. you, I'd like to showcase a few, uh, and certainly our guys outside can be very helpful. Tomatoes are not winter hardy yet. Squash are not winter hardy yet. They need warm soil. They need no frost. Uh, geraniums, we have people ask for them, but you need to bring those in at night when it's cold if you have them out during the day. Um, just be prepared to protect things if the weather changes. Mm, and We've had some weather changes this past couple yeah. weeks, haven't we? And they do say about this area, you know, if you wait five minutes, it'll change. <laughs> Would you mind lifting out some of those? And, and we'll talk briefly because we want to open up a few questions. You can go to the perennial section, but I'm selective when I go. I want plants that are going to hold up really well. This is Artemisia Palace Castle, but it's a color that blue blends with everything. Wonderful. Here's another one that you may Beautiful not use very much, okay? And it is Lamium. Look how pretty it is with that. And uh, unusual, okay? These are a little different, but these are the perennials that really hold up either in flower um, or mostly color. This is Cerastium, Snow in Summer. That's a trailer. Look how pretty that is. Then you could go yellow if you chose with the Lysomachia aurea. And this is the darker euphorbia. Isn't that fantastic? 
And just pick up one of the grasses, honey, down here, so we can talk oh, about. Sorry. Excuse me, because talk about grasses. Is it? We need to open it up for a few questions. There. there are so many ornamental grasses that are just beautiful. Yeah, I think we do that. Cas uh, up and cascades out with variegations. This is one of the Carex Evergold. This isn't a Carex. This one is a Chorus. Very different, but a little different in form. And this is another Carex, which is golden in color. Yuck. Oh, that one you've got to have share. To grab that one. Yes, you do. Because this is one that people don't use in containers very much. And it is Holictotrichon. Now that's a mouthful. Holictotrichon. And it grows about two and a half feet. And then later in the summer sends up spikes above that but this is a beauty look how pretty it is hey, can you repeat that name i'll spell it for you okay as i'm looking at it e-l-i-c-t-o-e-r-i-c-h-o-n i'm gonna stick with the containers i'll let you do that <laughs> Okay, um, and don't forget that there you there's many beautiful bulbs out there for you to either enjoy tucking them into the container and knowing that you're going to lift them out when they're done, okay, plant them in the garden, or if you don't have a garden, just say, hey, you know, we we women can justify most things, hmm. and I can justify the fragrance. Can you smell it? Through the camera, that is a <laughs> wonderful smell. Absolutely wonderful on that. Uh, Sally, we could take some questions now. Sally, are you there? Kidding. Sorry, my dog started barking. Sorry, everybody. Oh. Um, all right. I am just going to let everybody know I'll be sending out a list with confirmed correct spellings on these things uh, tomorrow because uh, some of them I'm going to have to just double confirm with you all. Um, first question, uh, more of my container plants made it through the winter than I expected. Should I try to replace some of the soil in the half of the containers that need new plants or leave the container alone, given that they have some healthy plants? Just add to it, loosen up around them somewhat because a lot of these perennials will live over and be beautiful in the winter time. I have in that collection of containers that I showed you earlier that I said that I enjoyed from my front porch with my cup of coffee or my glass of wine and one or the other, you know, um, has a lot of carrots in it and, and it's doing beautifully, but I will replace the, um, sometimes it even pays to lift things like that out loosen the roots and fresh on the soil you don't have to replace it but add more soil to it okay okay and more fertilizer remember add some of the plant on when, when when do we feed these in the spring as we're planting yes yes always well that plant on doesn't put hard it's slow release and so if you could have it whenever right doesn't push too hard Okay, thanks. All right. Next question is back to some of the containers. Are some of these these containers that you're showing here, these composite ones, are these winter? Are these okay for the winter? Do you have to do anything special to keep them from being broken? Uh, good question. We, we had spoken a little bit to the Crescent brand uh, plastics. Um, that brand in particular is a commercial grade plastic. It is uh, very durable. Um, Generally, the, the crescent containers um, don't necessarily need to be elevated on a pot foot be, because of that durability. Other composites um, are, are very durable. That plastic can be a little flex. Now, um, there are certain composites that can be more rigid. You generally can feel that if you have the container in hand and occasionally a thinner, more rigid material might be a little less winter hardy, but composites are, are a great way. We have um, lots of composite materials used in our area in Northern Virginia here, uh, planted year round that do not move. Um, 
composites a great material pretty pretty versatile and, and the concrete is also pretty yes. reliable as we said earlier in the show and maybe some of you may not have caught that is that the the self watering needs to be emptied and brought in great great little highlight again yeah that self watering container that has that reservoir that holds the water just think about that water freezing and expanding. And that's why that would be an annual planting um, or that container. Maybe it's a, it's a plant that can survive in, indoors for the winter. Right, well, that's true. Yes, some of them are very interesting in that way. Yes, is there another one, another question? Um, yeah, we've got a lot of questions coming in. So just a reminder for everybody, if we don't get to you, please feel free to follow up after the class. We'll get your questions answered for you. Um, how long did you say the dill will last until, I know once the heat comes, it kind of doesn't last super long, but. The dill should hold up well for you okay. un until, you know, you could get a couple of months out of it. You know? okay. And just confirming now is a good time to, you can go ahead and plant dill now. Absolutely. Okay. Now, I did not for that one in my garden and it came through fine. Mm. I went out to check. Now I did that for a reason. I wanted to find out. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> I try things out. Um can you can you restate that purple plant that has the good scent? I can't I couldn't see it super great. Is that oh, it was the highest scent. Yeah. This is a bulb, okay? And it's only available right now. It doesn't it only lasts a couple of weeks, but it's so heavenly, you know, and you can plant it out in the garden if you have a garden, okay? It's one of my favorite smells in spring yeah. at the garden center. It's wonderful. And look how, look how well it combines with some of these. Hang on to that, babe. Let's just show them a couple of, it's fun to play with these things. Here's two different petunias. Look how pretty that is with that highest sun. Even though you're going to take the highest set out if you plant it in. This one is a, a relatively new one. It's called Headliner. Well, both of them are called Headliners. And, and they're, they're really neat, you know? Really neat. You can actually uh, even throw in this. And, and look what happens if you put a beautiful gray one in there. Mm. Not pretty. That looks good. Cold hardy. Thank you. Um, okay, actually, this leads well into the next question, which is about petunias. How do you keep petunias from getting leggy? I cut them back, but they seem to always get sloppy in the late summer. Is there anything you can do about that, or is that just kind of the way things work? Cut them back hard. Cut them back hard, okay. It's amazing that within two weeks, they'll pop back, and if they don't pop back, throw them out and get another one. Okay. Um... Next question, do you have any types of guara that you suggest for containers? Any type of what? Guara, G-A-U-R-A. -A. Oh, guara. Any of the guaras are pretty much. One reason I shy away from some of the flowering perennials are that I normally choose things that will be beautiful in flower, which is usually brief with petunia, I mean, with uh, perennial. So I want the foliage to be really nice. However, there are a lot of people that enjoy uh, perennials, even if they bloom for a short period of time. They'll take them out, plant them in the garden, and put something else in there, and that's fine. However, with Gara, that is a very airy, I call it a see-through plant, because you can put it in the front of a border and it doesn't block the view of what's behind it and it without deadheading even it blooms all summer long so that is a good candidate to put into containers gara g-a-u-r-a gara Yes. Good. Yeah, we're getting some comments. A few people love using it. Um, okay, you guys are surrounded by a lot of plants, but we have a question about the one behind you, Peggy, on your left, behind your back, on the the one on the end of the table. Yes. Are, they want to know what's in that pot. Well, we're going to bring it up. I have to bring it up. <laughs> a handsome young, strong man with me today. Where's that that is a plus, really. We may do this more often, Andy. Yeah, start bringing you into. I think so. 
I'm going to rotate this around so we get a little bit of the auditorium effect here. Yes. Okay. We will name these because they are all, well, I, I won't stand up, will I? <laughs> Let me kind of give it a Oh, that's for you, much Patty. better. This is the Acorus, A C O R U S, Acorus. It is perennial, it is evergreen. You might have to trim it out if you've left it out all winter, as I have in a lot of containers, to tidy it up, but it's fine. This is a lissom, and it loves the cool weather, and it comes in the whites and the purples and, and different colors, okay? And it will bloom for a long period of time. It's beautiful in containers. It's beautiful at the edge of a border in the ground. And if when it's finishing its bloom, first bloom, if you shear it back, I'll shear the blooms back, it will come out and bloom again. And that is fantastic. This obviously are two shades of pansy and I'm very careful with my color combinations. Okay, I love that together. And this is that uh, Ascot Rainbow Euphorbia. E-U-P-H-O-R-B-I-A, euphorbia. Yes, that's it. And the, that has that really interesting bloom on it for a long period, long period, and months. And then if it gets not tidy, you can trim it out. But the foliage is still beautiful. I don't know if I can see that foliage yeah. or not, but yeah, some of those it's gorgeous. leaves get yeah. some kind of bronzing to them, really beautiful so, And there's viola. And that's pretty much what's in there. That's great. Thank you. We had a question actually about the euphorbia. Have you all heard, is that, it, can euphorbia be harsh on skin? You know, so all of the euphorbias can be. Okay. So if there's any question about that, you know, wear some gloves. I always work with, <laughs> most of the time, work with gloves, okay? Um, and if I'm, I, I of course, love my cloth gloves which i don't have up here today but there's some beautiful gloves out there and i will often slip the, the inexpensive plastic gloves on top of them if i'm working with wet things because i don't want my hands to be wet yeah so when you're working with euphorbias fortunately i haven't had that problem but i know that some people do and so just just be a little aware that you need to be working with gloves okay Okay, yeah, that's good to know. Um, okay, we have a few more questions. Uh, the first one is, do you know what the current, what the average date of last frost is in, in Fairfax County? I can't remember, I guess if we can ballpark it. I know it's never like, there's an average date. But. I want to say 26th of April, but that could be wrong. Towards the end of April? Is that kind of- I think that's yeah. a good, okay. yeah. a good estimation. But, but you know, most of us always push the envelope and even with tomatoes, and I would like to share with you um, that I did definitely push that envelope last year, and we did have some cold weather in April, but I was pleased with what happened. I have a lot of lettuce that I that store bought from here for my first lettuce, then I planted some seeds in the garden for the second round of lettuce. And now I also have planted some in my large containers, all at the edges. And, and that was, will be my first harvest because the soil in containers warms faster than the soil in the ground. And we think about air temperature for hardiness of these plants, but in actuality, it's equally important the soil temperature and if you push it with things like tomatoes sometimes and, and peppers and so forth they they don't grow as well at the beginning however i had my lettuce all around the edges and i planted early one of the well early i will we'll get tomatoes in we may get a few next week but it's gonna be a couple of weeks and that's still a little early. Um, I planted one in that container though, a couple of weeks earlier than I should, would have put it in the ground, okay? And when a little light frost was predicted, 
I wrapped it very carefully with that cloth, frost cloth that I showed you and pinned it down with the side pins. And guess what? It came through with flying colors because it was grown a little cooler under there. I left it on, by the way, for days, even do that. Because it was a little, it got very stocky. I had tomatoes very early. I was thrilled. So it doesn't hurt to try one or two. That's right. And then hold off a little to plant the rest off of them. That's what I do. All right. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I know that's kind of a challenge every year. Uh, okay, next, we've got a couple of questions that I think are really quick. So if you're okay, um, what was the name of that, the harvest cloth or the frost cloth that you were showing? It's, it's, this is just one brand and I threw it down on the floor. So I'm going to disappear for a minute. Sorry. <laughs> that's all right. We didn't have enough room for everything we wanted to talk about. <laughs> Harvest Guard would be the, okay. the name on this one right here. But there's other brands too. Okay, so that's a frost cloth example that you could use. Very thin, very reusable. You can put it on, you can leave it on for however long you want to. Okay. A lot of people use this also to cover their uh, squash plants from the beginning and leave it on until they need pollination. Okay. To keep the squash bugs off. Now, before you go away completely, I do have one last picture as a grand finale. Okay, do we, did we have another question? We've got a few more, but it's okay. <laughs> we okay, can, well, okay. I know we're out of time, so. Okay, as, as a grand finale, I have pretty much included a picture of little Clara in every program because as always, I promote including these children in your garden. And I have done that with my children, my grandchildren, and now my little great-grandchildren. And you can do it. You can borrow a neighbor's child because they are our tomorrow. But Clara loves to be in the garden and she had just helped pick big bouquets of daffodils. So be sure that you take time to smell the roses or daffodils as the case might be. Thank you for watching today. And I was so pleased to have Andy come on with me. Thank you we'll so much for having again. us. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Peg. And Andy, I am glad I always have trouble trying to decide what kind of container to pick. So that is helpful. Um, Peggy, thank you so much. Uh, reminder to everybody, keep an eye out tomorrow for that recording. Um, if you have a Yahoo or a Verizon email address and you don't get your coupon, or if you just don't notice you don't get it anyway, send me an email. Uh, I will get you your coupon personally um, if you have any trouble. Uh, we do have a class coming up in an hour with David Yost on Dogwoods. So if you would like to join that, send me a note, just maybe change the subject line to say like plant clinic or something. So I know, cause I've got to keep an eye on, you know, I'm, I'm running out to get lunch, honestly. So I need to check all the emails. Um, so we will uh, be back soon. Uh, Peg, I know you're going to be back for a late spring container gardening class. Once I think I'll be back maybe even next week for a shade gardening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, Shade Gardens. So yeah. uh, check our website if you want to join us for more classes. And as always, thank you, Peg, and thank you, Andy. We appreciate it. Our Thanks. pleasure. <laughs> Everybody have a great day, and we'll see some of you guys for the next class at 2 o'clock. Bye. Fantastic.